23 ways to break Minecraft and have fun doing it. Whether it's turning the end into a supernova, generating the so-called nearlands, or otherwise just making Minecraft work in ways that it's not supposed to. Here are some of the best ideas to push Minecraft past its limits. Hey there folks, I'm Skip the Tutorial, and here we like to play games the wrong way. And hey, if this is your first time here, then make sure to crash that subscribe for more deep dives into your biggest questions. Number 1. The Expected Kicking off, one of the most iconic ways to trash your Minecraft is to boot up a super flat world of TNT. Now, the way that we ignite this can be any method that we want, whether it's a redstone block, a flint and steel, or just whatever we feel. Just pick your ideal way for the world to end, and let it happen. I only notice that, as your game becomes a slideshow, maybe turn down the volume a few notches. Otherwise, this'll end up being 23 ways to mess up your eardrums. Number 2. Forest Fireball So, for this one, we could just use any old forest bio. But a buffet-style jungle map is really my favorite for the method. And we can take in the beautiful scenery all we want. It's not exactly breaking Minecraft. To do that, we'll need to summon in a gassed fireball by itself, making sure to tweak some of its properties. By beefing up the explosion power tag in the NBT data to anywhere between 50 to 100, we can really do some damage to the landscape and our PCs. From there, we just sit back and watch the flames spread as the frames drop. And frankly, if we just wanted to instant crash the game, then we could just puff the explosion power to crazy heights, like 100,000 instead of 100. But that doesn't quite offer up the same spectacle. And honestly, some people just want to watch the world burn. Number 3. Lose a life bar To take this one on, we'll need to have no life. And while that's not hard to do in the real world, our health bar in the game makes it a bit more complicated. In that case, we can use this command to give ourselves a permanent stone button that'll remove all of our health bar. Why? I'm not quite sure, but if we walk around with no life bar for just a little bit, then all of a sudden, we'll just randomly die and have no way to respawn. Number 4. Crashing Crypto Before the market bottoms out, we'll need to pad out our accounts with some super secure currency. And for this occasion, I've decided to use my personal favorite cryptocurrency, but you can use any transactional item that you want. And what we'll be doing here is dragging through our stacks across every single slot of the chest evenly. After that, we can close out a one and then control click on the first one to get another copy, this time of the filled chest. So to really fatten up our investment, we can drag stacks of this new item across each and every slot of the new chest, and then continue that over and over until the blockchain starts to give out. What we're doing here is essentially creating a Russian nesting doll situation. And however many layers that we go deep, that's all up to your RAM. Number 5. Farlands or Bust The Farlands are a legend of Minecraft world generation, dating back to some of the earliest versions of the game. And while we could boot up one of those versions and then start up an 8 year long let's play to try and reach the Farlands, there's actually a way for us to do this in 1.14. Using a fabric mod from user Genie, we can re-enable the Farlands in recent versions, and that'll remove the teleport limits so that we can go millions of blocks away from spawn to just see these things for ourselves. And while the strange world layout is pretty cool, it's nothing new, and there's actually more that we can do without the block limit. In a super flat world like this, you can see that at a certain point, the lighting engine will just stop working and we get this really strange effect where certain light sources have no effect on the pitch black. And after exploring all of this and seeing exactly what can go wrong, it's kinda easy to see why the limit was added in the first place. Number 6. Gaming Week! If you're one of the millions that's been watching PewDiePie's latest Minecraft videos, then you're probably hoping Sven stays alive for the series to continue. But with just how reckless Felix can be sometimes, that pup is in constant danger. So, to make sure the series lives on, we can set up this command block contraption to get a couple of extra spends for Pews to hang out with. And don't worry about not getting a good enough look at them, because after a while, that'll be the only frame your computer screen shows. Number 7. Breaking Bank Now with a recession coming up, it's best that we get our money out of the local banks and safe into our inventory. For that, we'll need to bust the items out of each and every one of our chests and make sure that the wealth stays secure. Although, with how much the frames start to chug here, we might not be able to save all of it. And this is why we should have reinvested in a better PC. Number 8. Explosive Personality With the help of the execute command, 
we can set up a rapid fire command block chain to keep spawning instant explode creepers right at our feet. After adjusting the explosion power value and then starting to walk around, we can really see just how much havoc we can wreck on the ecosystem. To me, the weirdest part of this one has to be all these strange symmetrical patterns that the creepers leave behind them. Almost like there's a method to all this madness. Weird. Number 9. Easy way out. Okay, so I'd be remiss if I didn't include this in the video. And the comments wouldn't let me forget it if I did. But if you're looking for a painless way to stall out your game, then simply hold the F3 and C keys on your keyboard for a couple of seconds. And then boom, the game will crash. Now, maybe it's not for me. But if this is how you choose to have fun breaking Minecraft, then by all means, full send. Number 10. Lucked out. Picture this, alright? You're taking a stroll through the mountains, when all of a sudden, you see some above ground diamonds. A common occurrence, I know. So you bust out your fortune 32,767 level pickaxe and start swinging. Before you know it, you'll have enough coal and diamonds to fill up your old house. Or at least just fill up your game's memory. Number 11. Don't say too much. Now to me, this seems to be one of the weirder oversights in Minecraft. But if you load into a single player world and start spamming your chat at just the right pace, you can actually get kicked from a single player world for spamming. Even weirder still, when you get kicked out, it actually brings you to the multiplayer list, which I'm guessing means it was a server tweak that was left into the single player worlds. While you don't need it, a bed does make this trick easier to pull off. But in the end, it just cracks me up that we literally don't have a say in our solo worlds. There is a limit to how much you can say in chat. Minecraft's ready to cut you off at a moment's notice. Number 12. The ground is falling. To pull this off, all we need is a super flat world filled with sand and a block update to knock them all down. Now, depending on how you set it up, it might actually take some time to trigger the fall. Like in my case, where I put so much sand in the world that I needed to dig a tunnel for everything to collapse. But regardless of how it sets off, we do get to see some pretty sweet patterns as the world falls apart. Number 13. Faster than light. While Minecraft can handle some pretty quick objects and effects, it turns out the game still maintains a speed limit. After spawning in a stylish pair of speed enhancing boots, we can blaze through the world at speeds that are so fast we'll actually outpace the game's world generation. And while it can be fun to run past the sound barrier, Minecraft only lets us get away with it so far before the game will actually crash from all the chunk updates. Number 14. A genius breakthrough. One of the classic glitches that's been in Minecraft for ages has been the ability to crack through bedrock and survival. And while it's not exactly intended in the game's code, it can be one of the most useful game breakers on the list. Laying out numerous sets of redstone and disappearing pistons, eventually we can smash through the unbreakable block and get all kinds of opportunities. My favorite of which probably has to be running along the nether roof, or even building farms up there. For how against the rules that it is, it definitely ends up being one of the most versatile in the long run. Number 15. Worth the experience. Earlier on the list, we had our fair share of spawning in entities. But what if we went a bit more meta and spawned in spawners? Using the set block command, we can set up a spawner of our choice to place anywhere in the world. And by adding in an extra command tag, we can have each new block destroy the previous one. The result of which is an EXP fountain that would put every single other mob farm to shame. Even if it causes a bit of lag. Number 16. Breaking the Laws. Another bizarre exploit that Minecraft has had for some time is that if you log out of the world while you're in the middle of a fall, you can actually reset the drop distance. So what that means is that we always have some way to save ourselves from breaking our legs, so long as you're ready to press the escape key. Just don't mention this to Isaac Newton, the guy's got kind of a soft spot for gravity. Number 17. The Nearlands. One of the coolest questions to answer in Minecraft is, what exactly happens to your world when the computer runs out of space? Well, with the help of an external filled drive, this is actually pretty easy to test. If we run an instance of Minecraft on that filled drive, in that case, it'll start to make the way the game loads through chunks kind of freaky. As you log out and log back in, you'll start to notice that chunks will get repeated at weird intervals all across the map. And it only gets worse and worse the more that we play around with it. The best part? Freeing up some space can actually leave these changes permanently. I mean, you can keep a copy of the Nearlands for yourself near and dear. Number 18. 
overcrowded. Now, if you've ever lived in an area with rabbits, you're well aware that those suckers get all over the place. And Minecraft doesn't exactly mirror that reality. So, to better represent just how many rabbits you'll see on a day to day, we can change the max entity cramming rule much higher than 24. From there, we can give them one cubic meter and use spawn eggs to pack the things into a totally humane confinement. After a while, the number of entities that get crammed in here will make your game into a flipbook. And in some cases, when we bust them out, it'll just crash entirely. Needless to say, that's why rabbits are an invasive species. Number 19, wide-eyed. To give another real world example, let's say you're playing on a faction server and you're trying to see inside this strange obsidian cube that's out in the open, but your stone shovel just isn't gonna crack you through before the owners get back. So an easier way to check out the situation is simply to change the program window. Seriously, if you just make the aspect ratio into extreme widescreen, we can peek through the walls and see just what they're stashing in the base. On our side, this basically gives us superpowers, but just make sure nobody else sees you do it, because you'll look kind of ridiculous from the outside. Number 20, Survival Time Saver. Now, if you want to quarry a big hole in Minecraft, what's the best way to do it? While a good go-to is to use a Haste 2 beacon and an Efficiency 5 pickaxe, that's pretty late game, and it's not even the fastest way. No, folks, if we want to crack through the Earth's crust, then the best way is to build a 1.14 TNT duplicator using coral fans. With this design, we can flick the switch to our heart's content and use one block of TNT to blow through the whole world. Number 21, I'd call that a light show. This next method takes us straight to the last dimension. When we finally reach the end, our best tactic here is to place down an always active command block to spawn in a whole bunch of sisters for the Ender Dragon. And after we've reached a decent count, we can break the command block and then summon in a high explosion power creeper to kill them all off in one fell swoop. Pulling that off will cause each of the dragons to start their death animations simultaneously. And interestingly so, their death explosions stack. As all of them keep dying in the center, the light they give off will only get brighter and better until we create our own star right here in the middle of the end. And after stepping back and getting a good look at it, I'd say this gets my vote for trippiest task on the list. Number 22, out of the box. After spawning in a world chock full of rails, here's where we can actually push Minecraft past its physical limits. If we teleport millions of blocks away to the world's border, we can set up a minecart with a furnace to help push us to the end. And as we're riding along to the edge, we just need to shrink the border right as we get close to it and that'll help us get past the 30 million block limit. And as Anvenom shows, we can use this method to get to the true end of Minecraft's world generation. This is what the end of the world looks like, folks. Get a good look at it. Number 23. So after breaking your game in all those different ways, I guess you're probably expecting something big at the end of this cave. But no, I'm just trying to do some mining, enjoy my afternoon, and oh, look at that. Looks like I broke Minecraft. With that, those are 23 of my favorite ways to break Minecraft. But if you know of any other fun ones, then let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you're interested in seeing more games play the way that they're not supposed to be, then glitch out that subscribe for more videos. And break this one over here to see us take on Minecraft if every block looked the same. But until next time, take care, and you have a good one, alright?